Oh, I just, oh, yeah, oh. For a song called Slut, that is like surprising. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that one, actually. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucin. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, person who likes to also listen to music and stuff. <laughs> And today, we're going to be listening to Taylor Swift's re-release of 1989, The Vault Tracks, five new songs, let's go. Yes, okay, so I love Taylor. I've become a massive Swifty throughout the channel. You've all followed my journey. If you haven't followed my journey, I've reacted to every single Taylor Swift album, first time hearing all of them. They'll put a playlist, there's a playlist around if you wanna check it out, there's one on my channel page. But yeah, 1989 was one of those ones that like, I knew a lot of the stuff from it, but like, I don't think I really appreciated it until I properly dug back into it. And I realized that like, this album has some of my favorite songs, like Out of the Woods is like right up there. It's in my top five Taylor Swift songs of all time. I just think it's perfect. So good. Yeah, I'm excited to see what she's got in store for us for these new five songs. Obviously, there's the big one that everyone wants to hear, Slut, exclamation mark, which is quite a big deal that she's actually put a song out called that. I can imagine her label at the time were not happy with that. And that's probably why that one was cut. Usually people leave their top fives in the comments section, but obviously there are only five songs. So please rank these songs, put your ranking one to five in the comment section. I will read through them on Monday. That's my, that's my day for reading comments. Yeah, and I really wanna see what yours are. I will let you know what my favorite song is out of the five at the end of this video. So make sure to stick around right to the end. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and you can actually watch this video completely unedited. So no cuts in any of the songs or anything over on Patreon. There's also a bunch of other benefits on Patreon. It's like a cute little community on there. You can even follow me on the free tier. So there's even like a way for you to be involved in the community, even if you can't afford to pay for any of the bonus content. Yeah, so make sure to head over there. I'll leave the link for you in the description. Also, bonus exclusive on the Patreon. I've actually put out my pilot episode for my podcast. The first episode being all, all about Taylor Swift's underrated songs. So if you want to listen to the podcast and give me your feedback, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it before I kind of finalise the format. Yeah, it's all on Patreon. I'm excited. I'm very excited. And I love the album cover. I'm obsessed. But I do agree with my Swifty bestie that like 1989 was never a beach album. It's not a beach album. <laughs> It's like a city album. And now she's like turning it into a beach album. It's very strange. <laughs> I haven't pre-ordered the album because I have a sneaky suspicion that my sister's going to buy it for me for my birthday. <laughs> no more chat. Let's get on to this. So the first song of the vault tracks is Slut. We're going to go straight into it. Let's go. Slow tempo. Love the kind of smooth, smooth synth vibes. It certainly fits in the vibe of the album, doesn't it? Love it. Wow. This is not the vibe I was expecting, but I'm into it. Really into it. Love it. Oh. <laughs> I love the pace of this. It's like a kind of simmering, ambient, synthy world. And as much as like the word slut has so much weight to it, it's such a soft song. <laughs> yeah. I'm obsessed with the way this is building. The drums are great. Might be worth it for once. Oh, okay. Production's great on here. Well done, Jack. Okay. I was hoping for one more like big blowout moment, but I do love the simmering energy of it. I love the synth energy. It's very soft, it's very ambient. For a song called Slut, that is like surprising. Right, so she's kind of saying they can call me a slut, but it might actually be worth it for once. And so it's this framing, it's like this kind of Taylor as a feminist kind of framing of like, this is what people are saying about me 
but I'm kind of going to do it anyway. So it kind of does fit, really fit into the kind of like the the style of the album and her kind of newfound confidence that kind of 1989 really was doing. You know, it's like, it was like, I'm a woman album, you know, and this is her, this is like one of the things that she's like, well, if if, as a woman, this is something you have to deal with is being called a slut. But like, if I'm going to get called a slut, at least I have you, at least I'm like, you know, being honest and true to myself, you know, a really interesting perspective. Um, kind of have like a slut shaming song because it has levels, you know? Yeah, I love it. I love the production. I do wish it just had one more big blowout moment because those like simmering drum patterns sounded as if it was going to be like an Into the Woods style big moment. But yeah, I suppose not every song has to be that. Flamingo Pink, Sunrise Boulevard, Clink Clink, Being This Young is Art, Aquamar- Aquamarine, Moonlit Swimming Pool, What If All I Need Is You. Got Love Struck went straight to my head, got Love Sick all over my bed. That's so good, like... Yeah, (laughs) it's like you've been out drinking, but the drink is love. (laughs) Love to think you'll never forget handprints in wet cement. Okay, so there's a sense of like, they're in LA, obviously there's there's the Sunrise Boulevard, there's the handprints in the cement, you know, it's like on the Hollywood, in Hollywood. And so maybe it's like something, like there was like some kind of love affair that she had in Hollywood. Maybe she got a bit drunk, went home with this person and people maybe on the internet were calling her a slut because she's sleeping around because she has all these boyfriends. And at that point, like there was so many, there was all like all the media attention were always about Taylor Swift's always like sleeping around. She's always got so many boyfriends, uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. And this is her kind of, I guess, processing that those, those hateful comments into kind of a more positive thing, you know? A dawn with smoke on my clothes, love lawn and nobody knows, love thorns all over this rose, I'll pay the price, you won't. Yeah, that's the thing, right? So she's really addressing the fact that there is like a like an imbalance between her and and the guy in this situation. And if they call me a slut, you know, it might be worth it for once. And if I'm going to be drunk, I might as well be drunk in love. Little Beyonce reference. It might be worth it for once suggests that she's like, obviously had to combat this forever. And it's like, sad, isn't it? That like, yeah, that that kind of like is over the top of the song. So it it does, it gives it that these multiple levels because it's like kind of tender and lovely and loving, but then has this kind of like slightly dark energy that hangs over it. It's quite potent in that way, you know? I like it. And I like that in that last chorus, there's that bit where like, it almost seems like someone's shouting at her, you know, slut, you know? The sticks and stones they throw, throws, throws midair. In a world of boys, he's a gentleman. So this guy is really lovely and supportive. And it also seems like this is the same person that um, I Know Places is about because it's giving that energy of like, you know, the sticks and stones freeze in midair when, when we have our kind of safe haven. So it does weave into the same tapestry. It's really, I love that, that this is like filling in more of that tapestry, you know. Taking your chances, it's a biz- big mistake, I say. It might blow up on your pretty face. I'm not saying do it anyway, but you're going to. This is her really like dealing with the fact that she's out and she's sleeping around and she's trying to kind of develop relationships like, but she's having to now deal with the kind of spectre of huge fame, you know. Yeah. Really cool. Love it. That was actually unexpectedly tender and beautiful. Cool. Okay, next song. This is Say Don't Go. I've known it from the very start. Mm. Darkest dark. (laughs) The darkest dark. That's cute. Sadness. Nice. I'm enjoying. We're gonna. It's building. Nice. Yeah. Oh. She's threatening to leave, but secretly she's like, actually, I want you to beg me to stay. Nice. Nice. Oh, I love the epic nature in the drums. Oh. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I love this. I love it. I love how these songs play into the vibes of 1989, but expand the universe of it, you know? Mm. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, so good. Oh, my God. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it, it's so good. Like, oh, I just, oh, yeah, oh. You're just letting me walk away. 
Yeah. She's like, I want you to fight for this relationship. Oh. I love that. Uh -huh. Yes! Oh my god, I got chills. So powerful. That moment where she says, I love you, and you don't say it back. There's just dead silence. Oh, oh god, it's just so good. <laughs> I love Taylor in maximalist pop mode, if I'm honest. I mean, I love Taylor in every mode. But <laughs> you Fucking great. Oh my god, so good. I love that. I love it. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Like, just gorgeous. I love it. Like, to just like, oh, to base a song around the moment where someone doesn't say, I love you back, you know. I feel like we've developed our relationship. I feel like you've made me fall in love with you. And now at the point where I'm ready to say, I love you, you don't say it back. And even after that, I'm like, fine, I'm going to leave. And still... He's like, okay. It's just like such a powerful moment to base a song around. And it just really feels very visceral. And I love the way that like the, the text painting stuff, like put it out so purely as like, I say, I love you and you don't say anything back. And then just have like a moment of like complete silence in the song is really like powerful energy. I love it. Really, really great. And I love how it just like sonically really fits with the rest of 1989. These two songs so far really just like fit in so seamlessly. Like it feels like they were always there, you know? I've known it from the very start. We were a shot in the darkest dark. I'm standing on a tightrope alone. I hold my breath a little longer. Halfway at the door, but it won't close. I'm holding out hope, hope for you to say, don't go. Why'd you have to leave me on? Why'd you have to twist the knife? Walk away and leave me bleeding, bleeding. Why'd you whisper in the dark? Just to leave me in the night. Now your silence has me screaming. Oh, it's so good, silence and screaming. Like, 1989 in general, and this song very much, like, is that combination between something that has, like, a strong kind of hook energy to it. You know, it has that kind of pop feel, but, like, still, the depth and the cleverness in the lyrics is still there. It's, like, such a brilliant balance. Now I'm pacing on the shaky ground, strike a match, and then you blow it out. I know it's not fair, because you kiss me and it stops time, and I'm yours, but you're not mine. Why'd you have to make me want you? Why'd you have to give nothing back? Why'd you have to make me love you? I said I love you. You say nothing back. Ah! Another amazing bridge to add to the oeuvre of incredible Taylor Swift bridges. Yeah, really brilliant lyrics, like, just, like, a real betrayal of, like, feeling like you know where you're at in a relationship with someone and then them pulling the rug from underneath you and not saying I love you back and, like, not fighting for the relationship even though you thought it was something it wasn't. And that's something that, like, when you put yourself so in such a vulnerable position as to say I love you, it's, like, devastating when what you thought was gonna happen doesn't happen, you know? It's like, yeah, and she's really captured that, you know? It's that moment where she's like got one foot out the door and she's just in, the, in her head thinking, just please say it, just please fight for me. <laughs> right, okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Now That We Don't Talk. Okay, and synth bass line, quite kind of clubby. To a party, I heard from everybody, get me started, did you get anxious though? Right, okay. Whoa, fun. Maybe it's about growing up and friends changing. Yeah. Nice, love that melody. I just really like talking about how you grow up in a different way to other people and how like feeling kind of left behind out of their life, you know. Weirdly short, like I'm certainly not used to Taylor doing like two and a half minute songs that don't have a bridge. And it's an interesting structure for a song for her because it really felt like it was just like a continuous thought that just kind of had a little hook in the middle. I feel like it needed to go somewhere though. I enjoyed what was there, but I felt like it needed more. Yeah, that one does feel like an undeveloped idea. When you actually think about like 
the rest of Taylor's songs. So that's kind of what I feel about that one. Now that we don't talk, and I love the concept of a song that's like looking at like someone you used to be friends with, but now you don't talk to them anymore, and how their life has like changed without you. You went to a party, I heard from everybody, you part the crowd like the Red Sea. I guess I'll never know now that we don't talk. And from the outside, it looks like you're trying lives on. I miss the old ways. You didn't have to change. But I guess I don't have a say now that we don't talk. So they obviously grew up together. And now this person's kind of like trying on new lives, maybe trying to explore themselves. And she's like, actually, I kind of like how you were before. Like, I don't feel like you need to change to suit other people. But maybe they're changing to, you know, for themselves, you know. I can imagine like someone writing a song like this about me <laughs> like I'm the friend in this situation because like when you do go away and you go to university and you do things like that it's a chance for you to reinvent yourself and try and really figure out who you are and maybe they didn't feel like that version of them as a teenager when they were friends with Taylor at that point maybe they didn't feel like that was truly who they were and they wanted to explore that so yeah Taylor <laughs> I called my mum, she said it was for the best. Remind myself the more I gave, you'd want me less. I cannot be your friend, so I pay the price of what I lost and what it cost, now that we don't talk. She's like talking to her mum about like this friend and how they've changed and whatever. And the mum's like, remember, there's a reason you cut ties with them. Like they weren't a very good friend for you. It's really filling in such a kind of like detailed little moment in her life, you know, and something that we all go through, like, People that we were friends with, with when we were kids, we don't necessarily stay friends with. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of friends that, I, that I've that i stuck with since we were kids. But, like, there are obviously lots of people that I've met along the way who I'm not in contact with anymore who have and their lives have developed. So, it's you know, it's a very relatable kind of feeling to kind of see their lives changing without you, you know, when you used to be so close. Like to be on a mega yacht with important men who think important thoughts gets maybe I'm better off now that we don't talk. And the only way back to my dignity was to turn into a shrouded mystery. There's a real sense of identity. It feels like a kind of like in your 20s kind of we're both figuring out what our identities are and they don't align anymore. And actually like my hair is really all over the place today. And actually like I don't like the way that you're going about yourself. And actually I think maybe I'm better off outside of that you know yeah cool i like the story i just feel like this this song just needed something extra next one this is suburban legends let's go you had people okay straight in in my peripheral vision okay you were so magnetic it was almost obnoxious flushed with the currency of cruel it's turning out that's cool flushed with the currency of cruel to make friends we were born <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm enjoying the like slow build, slow build, bump, slow build, slow build. Walking in with you. So another like looking back at a childhood thing. I can still see you now. I love that. We were born to be natural, no treasures. I broke my own heart because you were okay. Oh wow, okay. You were too polite to break my heart, so I did it myself. So it's looking back at like a, a kind of teenage romance, which is quite an interesting perspective, you know, to look back at that when she's written so many songs from that moment, you know. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that one actually. I was hoping I would, because I like the idea of it being called Suburban Legends. I like that kind of that kind of feeling of coming from the suburbs and like rising above the suburbs and becoming a legend out of that like I love all that kind of imagery and the way that it kind of speaks of like the kind of optimism of youth and the hopes of like what you're going to do after you leave this small town like I love all of that I just feel like again like that one feels a little bit underdeveloped for me I don't know maybe these songs will grow on me a bit like I feel like the first two were good these two haven't been as strong. That's what I'm thinking. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I liked kind of like the way the dynamics were going, but then again, it didn't feel like it kind of topped out. The production seemed a little bit less inspired. Like it felt like it was just like another imitation of the songs that we've already had in terms of the production. Like I felt like it needed a bit more personality. I feel like with Jack Antonoff that like his production can, if it doesn't have like a strong 
vision from the artist kind of directing in a certain direction his production just kind of sounds a bit blah to me sometimes and this is why like I don't really like bleachers if I'm honest this song particularly didn't feel like it had a strong personality and therefore just went a bit blah um production wise um let's have a look at the lyrics you have people call you on your um, on unmarked numbers in my peripheral vision. I let it slide like a hose on a slippery plastic summer. So it's like, I like that, the imagery of like a, like a summer in a small town, you know, like a little paddling pool. You were so magnetic, it was almost obnoxious, flush with the currency of cool. That's great, Derek. I was always turning out my empty pockets when it came to you. So she's kind of feels like she's on the back foot. I didn't come here to make friends. We were born to be suburban legends. When you hold me, it holds me together and you kiss me in a way that's going to screw me up forever. I had the fantasy that maybe our mismatched star signs would surprise the whole school when I ended up back at our class reunion walking in with you. Oh, so that's a sense. So it's like a class reunion. This is the vibe. And this is how it fits into the 1989 kind of era. Looking back at high school days and kind of thinking, who am I now? And when now I'm in my mid twenties and how does it kind of reflect on like who I was then, you know? You'll be more than a chapter in my old diaries with the pages ripped out. And I'm standing in the 1950s gymnasium and I can still see you now. Tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop. No, cause you were too polite to do it. Waves crash on the shore, I dash to the door. You don't knock anymore, my whole life's ruined. I'm not sure exactly what this song is trying to do. It's a bit of a, I think that's kind of why I'm not really vibing with it is because like lyrics and production, it doesn't feel like it has a strong direction. Okay, before we go into the final song, this is a shout out to my patrons. These guys support me on the paid tiers of my Patreon. Thank you very much to them. This is one of their perks. Get the name in the video. Also, you can get my videos unedited and early and actually if you want to request any specific reactions from me you can do that in the upper tiers i'm thinking of expanding all the things on patreon into doing live streams and the podcast as well and so if you're interested in all of that and then head over to patreon and sign up into the paid tiers or if you just want to follow everything that's going on and have a little cute community where everybody likes the same music you can follow me on patreon in the free tier yeah keep up to date okay Right, let's go on to the final song. This is Is It Over Now, which is a great final track for an album. Uh, let's go. Ooh. Intense reverse vibes. Cool, okay. Once the flight had flown with the wilt of the rose. Okay, I'm not sure I'm crazy about the weird, oh, screaming thing, but I like that. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. I like that this one bent big with the drums. I'm, I don't like the uh, thing. I don't know why Jack is obsessed with doing that in songs at the moment. It's annoying me. <laughs> it's the same in Lavender Haze. Oh, I love those drums though. Very out of the words vibes. <laughs> wow. Oh wow, okay. Whew. Wow. So, I'm not sure what the perspective is. But there's a relationship and he seems to have cheated on her. Is it a guy? Somebody has cheated on Taylor. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Nice. Uh, uh. Oh my god. So it's a similar kind of perspective to Say Don't Go, where it's like you're still not saying it, you know? Mm. I liked that. That was good. That went to the heights that I wanted. I mean, it seemed to directly sample the drums from Into the, into the Woods. Into the into the woods we go, we get out of the woods. Like, if you're gonna make a song that I'm gonna like, it's gonna be sampling into the out. Oh my god, out of the woods. Yeah, that definitely went to the heights, and like, there was a real sense of like tension and bite in her lyrics there that I really 
yeah, want to dig into. Once the flight had flown with the wilt of the rose, I slept all alone, still you wouldn't go. She's stuck in her head, she's like, Meh. I see your profile and your smile on unsuspecting waiters. You dream of my mouth before it called you a lying traitor. You search in every maiden's bed for something greater. So it's like, obviously someone's been cheating on her the whole time. And now she's kind of like, sees it, you know, it's like, you know, they're in a restaurant or whatever. And like, she sees him flirting with the waiter and it's, she's like recontextualizing these things. You know, now she knows the truth. All these things were clues the whole time, you know. Was it over when she laid down on your couch? Was it over when he unbuttoned my blouse? Come here, I whispered in your ear, in your dream, as you passed out. Baby, was it over then and is it over now? Oh, okay, so they both cheated. Okay, so it's like, is this relationship even still a thing? It's ridiculous, this is fucked. When you lost control, red blood, white snow, blue dress on a boat, your new girl is my clone. Well, and did you think I didn't see you? There were flashing lights. At least I had the decency to keep my nights out of sight. Only rumours about hips and thighs and my whispered sighs. Oh Lord, I think about jumping off a very of a very tall somethings just to see you come running and to say the one thing I've been wanting, but no. That's like so powerful like and really dark to kind of say like, I'm thinking about like, just to get your attention, I'm gonna jump off a fucking building. Like she was also sleeping around. So it's giving me like open relationship vibes, but maybe like, I don't know, it's interesting. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it's, what it is about. Let's fast forward to 300 awkward blind dates later. If she's got blue eyes, I will surmise that you'll probably date her. You search in every model's bed for something greater. So she's certainly talking about a specific betrayal and she's really tearing this guy apart. I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, what the kind of context of it is. I'd love to hear, as always, with Taylor's stuff, you guys are really good at filling me in with the context of what was actually happening. So let me know what you think all these songs are about, who they're about, etc. Okay, interesting bunch of songs. They didn't all hit, they didn't all quite go to the place I wanted them to go to. But I do like how they seem to fill in parts of the 1989 story that were kind of missing, like elements of like stuff that was a bit harsher, a bit more jagged, maybe the song Slut and maybe this one where she's talking about jumping off of buildings and stuff. Maybe the label were like, we don't want you talking about that kind of stuff. And therefore, that's why that stuff didn't get on there. And so this feels like a truer kind of like, these were the other places my mind was going when I have, when I wasn't being limited by the label. And I like that it kind of fills in more of that story of someone in their 20s who's like going into kind of a new life, you know? Yeah, because like the other aspect of it was like looking back at like your kind of teenage romance and kind of, and that's something that as someone in your 20s, like reunions start happening, you know, people were always looking back and looking and comparing like how far they've come. And like maybe the original album that like didn't include those because that was kind of referring to earlier eras and this was meant to be a clean cut movement into pop. And so this one, yeah, it does, I do feel like they fully flesh out the storyline of the album in a good way. I just feel like the songs, some of them are just haven't been developed enough. I feel like they just need something extra to take them over the top or need some more personality to really make them like stand out. I'd be interested to hear what you think. My favourite Vault track from 1989 is Say Don't Go. I feel like that one was the one that really nailed it and had a real sense of personality to it. But yeah, let me know what you think of the of the Vault tracks. Make sure to rank them in the comments. If you want to check out my original 1989 reaction, it is here. And if you want to check out my reaction to Speak Now's Vault tracks, it's here.